Hello and welcome to this London Embroidery School Stitch Along. I'm going to be your host for today, Natasha, and we are working on our brand new product, which is out for public release today, which is this Union Jack embroidered patch, which we're going to be adding some lovely shiny red bugle beads to. As with all of our patch kits, this is not the first one, but uh, as with all of them, I would suggest that you start by window mounting it. And within the kit that you get with these patches, you get a backing fabric on which to mount it. Sorry, I said window mount it. That's something slightly different. We're just plain mounting it, but that's gonna work perfectly for our purposes. So in one of these kits, you get the patch itself you get some red thread, you get your pack of bugle beads to add, you get your needle, which is this little one here, you get um, your instructions card to follow, but it's a very simple piece, this one. We are literally just applying the bugle beads and we will end up with a piece that looks a little bit like this one here. So you can see what a difference those red bugle beads make and we are just laying them in parallel across the whole piece. But first off, what you need to do is to take a piece of thread, thread it up into your needle. I'm just gonna grab my thimble because that is my preference when I stitch, not an essential though and with a knot in the end just use the thread to tack the patch into place so that we can work on it now some people like to just pin their patches into place but as you can see when you've got the pins in it it can um, make your patch lie buckling and so if we tack it as you will now see we can remove the pins and it will lay properly flat, which is obviously a much better surface to be working on. We wanna try and get everything as smooth and as even as is humanly possible. And when we're tacking, we're looking to avoid any of the red areas as we are going to be stitching into the red areas and we don't want our tacking to get in the way because as the name suggests, it is just tacked into place and we are going to be removing that tacking at the end to release the patch from the backing, cut away any excess backing, which will all be within the back of the patch. You won't be able to see the backing around the edges as none of our red sections come actually to the edges of the patch. They have this lovely satin stitch edge. And then that patch will be ready to apply to the item of your choosing. I think these are really lovely for things like uh, jackets because you know you can um, quite easily apply them to something like that and with it being beading they should be fine for a gentle wash like you might do with a jacket or you know rucksacks if you've got a rucksack that you've been collecting patches on then uh, this would make a really lovely addition to that. This is the second of our two coronation themed and celebrating patches for the upcoming coronation of the King at the start of next month, which we are very excited about as a London based company. Thanks to everyone who's joining me today. It's always fun to have some people on and interacting with me live. So if you have any questions that you would like to pose to me today, please do feel free to pop them into the comments section down the bottom. I will be checking those periodically as, you know, for the most part, I will be focusing very hard on my stitching, but I will try and have a little look through those every now and then and answer any questions that you might have. So just coming in with a fresh piece of thread now We always make our thread about fingertip to elbow in length so that that is a good manageable length to be working with. It means that you don't have to bring your shoulder into the movement of your stitch. It can all be controlled just through 
the wrist and elbow, which is much better for your back and your neck going forwards. So I would suggest perhaps if I pop that here, maybe we'll just pin that into place so you guys can see it and it doesn't move around. So from our finished one over here, you can see that we've got um, four little lines of single bugle beads going along the narrow bits and then we just work with all of the bugle beads being horizontal to the patch through the center cross. So if we take this uh, knot in the end And we're going to start with the narrow ones because we can just work them straight up and down. So I would suggest that you leave your knot on the back for extra security. We, we want to pass through each bead twice, once again for security. So we're coming up right on the outside edge. Let's bring our beads over. slightly yep. grab one of our beads slide it down the thread lay it flat to the angle that we want to see it in and drop the needle down just on the outside of the length of the bead as I mentioned for security we're going to go through each bead twice so we come back up again pass through that bead and drop down. Then we're pretty much back up almost on the spot. We pick up our next bead. We slide it down. Drop the thread down through the patch, trying to keep our beads as straight as is possible. Don't forget to go back and pass through that bead again and drop down. Now I'm just going to check whether we can fit three or four. I'm probably just going to drop three into here as I think that's what we've got the best space for. So coming up, pick up a bead. So we're going to aim to have three well-spaced beads in each narrow section. As I mentioned, this is oh, let's get that out of the way. This is the second uh, of our coronation-themed patches. The first being the crown, which you will see as a working progress up here. That is left over from my stitch along last week. Uh, at the Crown Patches launch, um, which I still need to get finished for you guys. But as you can see, it's another very exciting piece and the two of them do look great together, I have to say. That one features gold work instead of beading. So you can see we've got some passing thread through the body here and then we've got some rough pearl loops around the top and some pearl seed beads through the body or anywhere really that there's a white dotted bead to enhance. So both of these kits are really lovely as a first foray into embroidery. So if you're thinking about starting but you're not really sure where to begin or what to begin with or if uh, a particular branch of embroidery is for you, then these are a really lovely way to just try a technique out without delving too deeply into it. We've built them so they are very much accessible with as few uh, specific pieces of equipment as is necessary. 
So some of the techniques we've modified ever so slightly to make it a little bit easier. There are a few um, very specialist pieces of equipment that you know often become a bit of a sticking point for people to try something out because they don't want to you know buy the specific equipment for something that they may not be interested in for that long or might not quite suit what they're looking for. And so these are a great way to just have a quick try. As I say, I'm using a bullion board over here for my beads, but you don't have to have one of those by any means. I just quite like to work on one because it stops the beads from rolling around. However, if this was your first foray into beading, then you could just go without have a little pot or a dish or a saucer or anything like that just to contain the beads make sure they don't roll all around the place and you know drop all around your room so that you don't end up short of any materials but um it just allows you to get started and see if that particular style of embroidery ticks your boxes and if it does then great we have lots of ways to help you to expand that repertoire further still and to delve a bit deeper into the specifics of a particular technique. But otherwise, if it's not for you, then not to worry. You still have a lovely, usable, embroidered piece at the end of the day to take away and still use somewhere and hopefully still cherish. And you can say, oh, well, that style of embroidery perhaps wasn't for me, but, you know, I still got something lovely out of it. And so these are really perfect for that, especially with the beading. Beading, you know, can be a little bit um, daunting because there's so many different types of beads that you could delve into. Um, we're just working with bugle beads here, which are, a, you know, a very classic style of bead. But the same applies to the gold work from the crown. People often feel that they aren't sure whether gold work is for them and if it's going to get very expensive. And that does have a few more specific um pieces of equipment, things like a malore or a laying tool is ideal for working with gold work, but again, not essential. And that's why we modified some of the techniques to make it a little bit easier. Um, so you don't have to do any like complicated things like plunging any ends. That is for if you want to delve into gold work in a bit more of a serious way. I'm just getting myself a fresh thread. I don't like to work with a thread that is too short. It really starts to affect your tension and can just make your stitching not as enjoyable, in my opinion. So I don't like to play thread chicken with myself. I just like to get it to a comfortable length and as soon as it's not comfortable, take a new piece of thread. You know, thread is such a cheap material really in the context of things that it's not worth trying to use it right down to the final parts of the strand. Just move on when you're ready. So just going over to the last of my narrow sections. So you can see this particular style builds quite quickly. You can achieve quite a lot quite quickly with this particular patch and with the application of bugle beads. As standard beads go, the bugle bead is quite a big one because it's so long. And it's this long, thin shape that makes these bugle beads. Just FYI. We've used bugle beads in quite a few of our classes. They are a favorite. And um, perhaps if you are interested in beading, off the back of trying one of these patches, then we have further classes on beading specifically that you could look into. So if you were interested in beading with a needle, as we are here today, where you apply them one by one, then we also have the uh, beaded coral online class, which is a real deep dive into beading as a whole. I have the sample for that just here. Let me show you, because I think you'll find it interesting to see other things that you could do with bugle beads if you found that they were of interest to you. So that's this class here, which you can see has got loads of different techniques incorporated into it, over 20 in fact. 
And so we've got some bugle beads up here that are like little triangles. We've got some over here that are like a tape, which is combined with the um, seed beads on the top. We've also got them here in combination with sequins and beads that they make like little umbrellas. And then also over here as like these little helix twisting towers. So loads of interesting things that you can do with bugle beads if you catch the bug, if you like. So next up, I'm going to head into the middle here, just starting at the top and grab one of our beads. We are now laying the beads horizontally and you will see they fit really nicely within the little running stitch details of the patch itself. The patches are all machine embroidered specifically for these kits. So they are really rather lovely in themselves, even before you've got to adding your shiny little details. Oh, I forgot to go through that first one twice, didn't I? Let's come back up. If you forget, that's fine. You can always circle back. It's only going to make your beading stronger and have better longevity. The other area of beading that you might be interested in getting into if you find that beading is of interest to you is a style called timbre. Now timbre is, again, quite a specific skill, which you do need a specific piece of equipment for, which is a timbre hook. But that can result in things that look a little bit like this one here. This is our intermediate timbre class, but you can see you've got the sequins underneath laid in a style called vermicelli, and then we have bugle beads which are set off at an angle um, and the interesting thing about timbre is that it is all done as a chain stitch can you see that there on the back with the through the white stitching in particular but all of it is done as a chain stitch which is what timbre is really all about and uh, that means that you pre-prepare all of your beads or sequins or just thread actually onto your thread before you begin and then you apply it all with a hook to create this chain stitch which is how you're able to actually get a bit more speed than if you're laying them individually like we're doing with um, needle beading. Now for interest a timbre hook looks a bit like this. So you can see it's an entirely different beast and that's the little hook that I was talking about. Can you see that there? And so that's how you create the chain. But if that's something you want to delve into further, we do have a whole load of uh, videos and classes specifically for Tampa. So do have a little look at them. Um, and on our YouTube channel, we've got some pro tips and sneak peeks where you can see some timbre in progress, see what it's all about, how the uh, mechanics of that actually works and work out if it is something that you're interested in pursuing further. Once again, just going to finish off this thread with some stab stitches and start afresh. So, are you looking forward to the coronation? Are you planning to watch it on the TV? Is it available to watch on the TV or will you be streaming it if you're not in the UK? I assume it will be on various services i don't know let me know is it of interest to you um we it i feel like whether you are a monarchist or not or british or not it's nice to have something generally positive to be looking forward to and so we felt that these little patch kits were a lovely way to just have a small project to do that's easily completable within a day you know this wouldn't take you a full day i'd say this small patch will probably take i don't know an hour max two hours maybe 
if you're doing it, you know, at your leisure, whilst you're watching TV also, perhaps, um, you know, or in a couple of sittings. And if you go off and, you know, make a cup of tea partway through and all that sort of thing, you could do it at a very leisurely pace, but still achieve it within a couple of hours, I would say. Um, or this one up here, this one will take a little bit longer because there is a bit more um, techniques in it. And also those techniques take a little bit longer each. So uh, the couching of the passing thread and the uh, pearl loops, both of which are, yeah, a little bit more specific and can't be rushed either, actually, I think is also part of it. So I'd say the crown patch would probably take you more like two to four hours, depending on how fast you are at stitching. But you can see how quickly this flag one is building. And how quick yeah how quickly it all comes along which i think is quite satisfying particularly when you are trying out something new you want to see it build quite quickly so you can hopefully have a wonderful sense of satisfaction if you've been interested in our patch kits we did release two different types, which are currently sold out because they were our Christmas ones, which was uh, the Snowflake and the Star, Mini Star patch kits. But we also have the Surreal Eye patch kit, which also sits very nicely alongside these two pieces. So uh, that one, this one shares the passing thread technique from the crown patch also but has some straight stitch of some embroidery thread around the eye iris but color wise they all sit really nicely together oh and I should show you this is the crown when it's finished so with all of its pearls in on the black base which I think is just lovely They've been selling really well over the last week since they've been out. So if you are interested in getting one, don't delay. This is a limited run for the coronation specifically. Um, and I think it's very unlikely that we would be uh, repeat ordering these pieces. So once they are gone, they are gone. It's just for commemorating this one moment in time. So if you want one, please don't delay. Get your orders in and we will get them out to you. And as I also mentioned, because they're such a nice achievable project during a single day, with all of these bank holidays that we've got coming up, you know, the early May bank holiday and then the extra one for the coronation, it seems like the perfect opportunity to try and uh, learn something new, do something good with that little bit of extra time. If you get it off, I mean, some people work jobs that uh, won't be affected by the bank holidays but if you have the opportunity it's a lovely one to take and hopefully you will be able to kick back and enjoy the bank holidays a little bit if you're having them. I know we have quite a few people who tune in internationally so if you are tuning in from abroad. I wonder if you have something similar. I'm sure you must have bank holidays of some sort, even if you're not getting them for our King's coronation. Um, I think that would be a little bit odd. And if you were getting extra time off for a, a different monarch's coronation, but perhaps it's happened, let me know. I'd be curious to find out where you are tuning in from today you are from abroad. It always fascinates me to know where you guys are based and what you're up to. Have you got any particular projects on the go at the moment? Or are you like me and you have many projects all on the go at once and you just kind of have to pick whichever one you are most excited by that particular day and run with it? Um, I am terrible for doing that. I think quite a lot of creative people 
are bad for having more than one thing on the go at once and can't sort of help starting something new when you get excited about it. We have a new class out last, well, it, within the last month, which was our knots class, our knotted landscape class, which again has gone so well. I was so pleased with how you guys all took to that. But whilst we were working on that, we're also working on a new introduction to embroidery class, which will be a three part series. And again, I think you guys are gonna really love that. I have started to sneak peek that on our you um on our reels uh, and it's uh, on a pink background that one it looks like a shell or it's well it's based on an ammonite but you know it looks like a a sort of shell shape with lots of different techniques included in it so if you are interested in learning embroidery in a more comprehensive way you know getting your teeth really stuck in to something as a bit of a bigger project, then that's a really good one to get going with. And that will be releasing next month, so do stay posted. If you wanna be one of the first people to know about our new products when we are releasing them, and to in fact have early access to all of our new products, then do think about joining our mailing list. You will find the sign up for that at the bottom of our website homepage. All you need to do is to add your email to the mailing list. We email out once or twice a week depending on what we've got going on at a particular time and yeah that's just to let you know about new things going on at the London Embroidery School. It also means yeah you have early access to all of our products um, at least 24 hours before they go out to the general public. There are exclusive discounts that we share on there. There are um, ways for you to also kind of have your say about what the London Embroidery School does and where we do things. So if that is of interest to you, do think about signing up and we would love to have you join us. I'm just thinking about the spacing. That in the middle. So when you're working your way around your patch, you do want to think a little bit about the placement and the spacing of your beads, making sure they look nice and even. But fortunately, as it's all red on red for this embroidery, you can't go too far wrong, to be honest. Just try and keep them more parallel and you should be good. Are there any particular areas of embroidery that you think we should be talking more about? Is there anything you would like to know that we aren't currently covering? That's the sort of thing we'd love to hear from you guys and get some feedback on. So if you have any particular thoughts on that do feel free to also pop us an email we always love to hear from you guys you can email us on classes at embroidery.london that is classes at embroidery.london nothing on the end there the dot london is our domain as we are london based so no need to put any dot code at uk or dot com on the end and yeah you can pop any thoughts that you have over to us on there We'd always be interested to hear from you. An alternative to the mailing list is also that we have a Facebook group, which is not super well known, but is a lovely way for you guys to be able to interact with one another um, and sort of hopefully support each other a little bit as a stitching community. So that is called the London Embroidery School Club. And over there, like with the mailing list, we share early access to things and run polls and um, yeah, just generally get you guys involved. But you can also share your own images with us as well as with the community 
um, in a wider sense and you can kind of interact with each other a little bit as well which I always think is nice that you guys get the opportunity to have a bit of a chat to show each other your work um, and yeah give opinions and stuff it's it's really nice to have a place to share not just me talking away at you guys but also for you guys to talk to one another now I am going to have to top up my beads in a second as I'm starting to run a little bit on the low side. I would strongly suggest if you are doing this sort of thing that you do not have tip all the beads out at once. That is just asking for trouble. So just tip a few out at a time. Make sure you've got a manageable amount on the go and that you don't yeah, tip them all out and then end up picking them up off your floors because I've I've been there and trust me you don't want to do it so learn from my mistakes and just have a few out at a time keep it all under control and it makes the whole process a lot more enjoyable because I always think you know embroidery is supposed to be a low stress hobby many people like to use it as you know a bit of a relaxation technique um, some people think of it as like kinetic meditation, you know, this repetitive motion, the act of doing, but in kind of a bit of a, not mindless way, but you know, you can just sort of like let your mind relax a little bit, just focus on what you're doing and hopefully not get too caught up in your thoughts. I personally love to have an audio book on whilst I'm stitching and just really get lost into the story or to listen to podcasts. I quite enjoy having someone chat away to me whilst I work. I think it sort of simulates that whole stitching circle, historical feel. When you feel like you're stitching with other people. So I'm just grabbing a new thread. So a little over half an hour in and you can see how much we have achieved whilst I've been chatting away to you guys. So as I say, very achievable, builds very quickly. Now I did break my thread, so I'm just gonna go back through those beads that I just laid to make sure that they are all secure. Really, you can't go through your beads too many times. And then we can pick up the pattern again. You will notice that there is a little bit of space between each of my beads just to give them some breathing room. And because of the amount that we can fit into the space, they're best to have a little bit of space between them to be filled. Also, just going to grab some more beautiful beads. Just a few at a time, as I say, for safety's sake. I guess you can probably also see the benefit of having something to contain your beads just so they don't go too wild. Always nice to have some familiar faces joining. I can see designs by Caddy on there. Hi, how are you doing? As well as um, Madeleine, Sales Punter. Hi, how are you doing today? It's always nice to see some familiar names popping up in the join section. I always feel very popping up some regulars to chat away to. As I say, if you've got any questions, do let me know. I am trying to keep an eye on the comments as they come through whilst we're stitching. Doesn't have to be about this particular style of embroidery or uh, this product, in fact. It can be anything embroidery related that you think I might be able to help you with.
so many people coming through today. I hope the light isn't too changeable for you guys. It is a little bit blustery and cloudy where I am today. So the sun is going a little bit in and out behind clouds. And as much as I have some um, lamps on, which hopefully will give us continuous light, I hope it's not, you know, sort of flaring and then going into shadow too dramatically for you guys. As always, if you're not able to stay for the whole stream, this will be uh, going on our reel section a little bit after we finish the stream today, which will definitely have finished by half past three, uh, as YouTube, oh no, not YouTube, uh, Instagram kicks you off after an hour. But uh, it will also go on to our YouTube um, when I have chance to edit the video and complete the patch. Um, so that it's on there for posterity and as part of our stitching techniques library. There's so much good stuff over on our YouTube channel. Please do check it out. If you are struggling with anything, I expect we probably have a pro tip on there that may be of assistance to you. So it might be something like how to do quick knots, which you may have noticed me doing earlier when I do the knot at the end of my thread. Um, it's sort of rolling between fingers and then it turns into a knot. I can show you how to do those and we have a video on that on the YouTube channel. Equally, if you have been envious of how uh, we thread up the needle with relative ease, which I won't be able to do next time I need to thread it up, now I've said that out loud, but it's worth it for you guys. So uh, yeah, if you wanna see how, well the method which I personally like to use for threading up the needle, which is the bloom into the eye method, but we have a YouTube video that is um, just on four different ways to thread up the needle. So if threading up a needle is something you've always struggled with, then perhaps we can introduce you to a different method of threading up that you might find just a little bit easier. It's often about just taking some of the things that you find difficult out of you know our hobbies because that can be a little bit off-putting for getting started and really like leaning into the enjoyment of the piece so you never know we might be able to show you a slightly easier or more comfortable way of doing something that can make your experience of your hobby that bit more enjoyable I particularly think that the quick knots and the threading up methods are particularly useful because this technique, for example, as you can tell by how many times I've started and finished threads and I'm, as I finish a new one, is quite thread thirsty. We go through a reasonable amount of thread in the time it takes to complete the piece, particularly as we're traveling through each of the beads twice. I think this is probably my sixth strand of thread for this piece. And so even on a small piece like this, if you are threading up six, seven, maybe up to 10 times within the one design, you of course want to do it in a way that is easy and enjoyable for itself. And having used those methods for quite some time now, you don't, you know, you go onto autopilot with them. You don't really have to give them that much thought once you've done them a few times and you've got the techniques down. And so, you know, it really helps to lean into that meditative aspect of embroidery. You can allow yourself to go onto autopilot a little bit and just do as your hands lead you. Not thinking about it too, too hard. As I showed you earlier, these patches, or all the patch kits in fact, come with uh, little written instructions like these guys for you to follow. So we try and make it very simple for you to approach, but also so that you can use it as a bit of screen free time if you are into trying to reduce your screen time. 
we all spend so much time in front of screens now that it is quite nice to have the opportunity to do something that makes you step away from screens that little bit. And many of our classes are obviously online classes, they are screen based, but these kits we have designed so that you are able to step away from that a little bit if you wish. You know, take it outside, take these on a picnic if you like. Um, you really don't need very much equipment. Just take it out into your garden or onto the sofa it doesn't have to be at a table. It doesn't have to be, you know, in a formal environment as some other stitching techniques would uh, benefit from. I'm trying to make it all a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more enjoyable. Get comfy with it, you know. just finishing up this line. When I finish up this line, I'm just gonna check the spacing of how many lines I can fit into this center section. We'll get at least two more. Yeah. I think that would be right because then we've we don't want to cover over the lovely little running stitch edge that we have on the patch so if we want to check the spacing we just do that by placing beads into their lines and we can see that that's going to fill depth wise that will fill there really nicely and then we will just have this bottom section to fill and we'll be done You will notice I am going sort of from left to right and then right to left, left to right. That's absolutely fine. You don't have to just go in one direction with your beading. It doesn't affect the tension too much of casual little pieces like this one. Sometimes when you get a little bit deeper into your beading techniques, the angle of working and the direction of working it does become a factor to take into consideration, but these ones, I would say, just go with the flow. Have you got any particular projects on at the moment? I do always love to hear about them. So often on these stitch alongs, we have people who are doing such interesting things. And I personally love to join in and watch other people making things whilst I am making things. So I wonder if you end up using these videos in the same way as I do with other people's to have somebody else making something whilst I'm inevitably stitching. Sometimes they're tailors, sometimes they're like model makers. It's just nice to sort of feel like you're part of a creative community, even if you are working quite independently, which so many people who do these sorts of pursuits do, whether in a professional or a hobby capacity. I think I talked a little bit earlier about timbre, but I didn't show you a couple of the other timbre pieces I have here you might be interested in. So like, for example, this piece here, this is all timbre, but without any beads or sequins. And so you can see it's just the chain stitch built up in two different threads, but you can see how many sort of like interesting effects you can create just with the one stitch. Equally off the back of this piece here, so taking this one technique that we have down the bottom of the beaded coral clasp, we have another piece here that just works again in that one technique, really building it up and using this piece as a study for this one 
technique, but really exploring the colors and getting into the technical aspects of that and really just building it up. This piece is so dense, I can't tell you how heavy it is. And if we have a little look at the back, you can see just how many stitches are in there. But it shows you the power of just using the one technique, like we're just using one technique here. And when you start to scale that up, it really becomes a thing of its own. A couple of bugle beads on their own can look a little bit sort of sad almost, but if you build them as an area and give them some grounding, then I think that they can become something really special, like we have on our flag patches. going to need to grab myself a new thread soon as I'm once again coming quite low to the end of this one. The needle that this kit comes with is quite a fine one so that it is narrow enough to fit within the bugle beads. It is not a beading specific needle though, you should um, notice that because it's quite short, it is an embroidery needle. And that is because our embroidered patches are, you know, reasonably firm as a base for getting through. So you don't want to have something too narrow and flimsy like beading needles often are. They are wonderful for just pure beading purposes. But for this particular project, I think they'd probably be annihilated. So this is an embroidery needle size 10, which is narrow enough to get into the bugle bead centers but not so narrow that it's like impossible to thread up or you know bends a lot this is actually my favorite style of needle which i know sounds like a really nerdy thing to say but i do have a favorite style of needle and an embroidery size 10 happens to be it i think it's a great all-rounder In addition to the kit, there are a couple of items that you would need to gather to complete your kit. So you will obviously also need an embroidery hoop of some kind. This embroidery hoop that I'm working on is a table clamp frame so that I have both hands free for uh, chatting away to you guys and looking through the comments and stitching. And for example, if you were going to explore Tamba further, then this would be an essential um, piece to look at, but you could absolutely do one of our flag patches just with any old embroidery hoop that is bigger than the patch itself. And the patches are only eight centimeters wide, so almost any uh, embroidery hoop will be big enough for these patches to work in. You'll also need some snips, as you've seen probably me bringing these into shots. These are our brass, handled um, uh, snips which are again a really great all-rounder but any small embroidery scissors snips will work just great for this at the beginning you will have noticed that I used a couple of pins and um, so you'll want to have a few of those to hand whilst you're working and that's that's it from things that you would need to gather. So very basic supplies that most people I feel will have access to relatively easily. In addition to those optional extras that I'm using today would be the brass sided thimble, as you can see, but that's just because I always love to stitch with a thimble. I feel that it saves my hands and obviously as I use my hands quite as much as I do, I try to look after them wherever I can. And the velvet board, but that's, you know, that's a bit of a luxury. I'm being a bit bougie here, um, but I have access to it. So I thought I would use it and I do think it is a nice thing to have. Velvet boards always feel lovely because they're velvet. Who doesn't like to feel velvet, you know? Um, and you might also like to have a laying tool to hand. So this is a stiletto, which is a type of laying tool, um, which 
can be good with your beading if you make any mistakes you need to lift any beads out again or undo any of your stitching it's quite useful for when we come to remove the tacking but again not an essential other types of laying tools that you could use so that's why i refer to it as laying tools as a, a broader umbrella rather than just um stilettos specifically uh, you could use a malore which is a gold work specific laying tool it has uh, a rounded end and a narrow end for different styles of gold work or you could use an awl or you could use um, there are other types of stiletto other than brass ones so if you have a laying tool they are often good to have to hand they're that sort of thing that you don't know you need until you use one and then you're like oh this is why I, I needed this I couldn't be without my stiletto now the stiletto is the choice my choice of laying tool again because I think it's a wonderful all-rounder but if you already have a particular piece of equipment that you're particularly comfortable with or adept with you know, there's no reason not to use them. I always think use what you are most comfortable with because I will always give you my preferences, but I appreciate that they may not sit quite as well in your hands. Like I have quite small hands. Um, and so what's comfortable for me may not be exactly the same as what is comfortable for you. But fortunately, there are lots of options for all of these aspects so you can hopefully ferret around and find the one that is best suited to your needs and anatomy and preferences so we are almost at the end of this session i don't think i'm going to quite get all of the beading done for this particular one but you can see just how far we've come even within this hour and me chatting away about various things and showing you other bits not just purely stitching within that time so definitely only an afternoon sort of project length these ones and when you get to the end what you want to do is just to unpick the outside tacking edge that will release the patch from the backing fabric and then you can go ahead and just cut away just on the outside of the backing fabric but within the edge of the patch so you want to lift the edge of the patch and cut uh, equi the equivalent of where the satin stitch edge is which if I show you on this finished one you can see you can cut it away so that all of the there's no flappy areas but then none of that can be seen from the front when it is complete. So I think coming to the end of this middle section is probably a good place to leave this for today. Thank you to everyone who has joined me. I hope I haven't missed any of your questions. If there is anything that I did miss, please do feel free to direct message me. I also pick up the direct messages for this account. So um, if I missed anything, please do feel free to message me and then I will answer you directly on there. Otherwise, thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next Stitch Along. Until then, have fun, stitch well, and keep making beautiful things. Bye for now.